Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We caught up earlier today with Dave O'Brien, who's the president and CEO of Stuhini Exploration, uh, listed in the, on the TSXV, uh, assets in BC. They're chasing Molly and Silver. Uh, we talked to him about what they're going to focus on, their fundraising activities, their desire, extreme desire to protect uh, shareholders from a dilution and uh, it's, it's quite extraordinary, uh, his, his take on that one. I quite enjoyed it. It's their asset, uh, and I did the company itself. Um, you can find that at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club, where you can also find detailed company reports and analysis. We've got training courses on there to help you with your diligence process, commentary from experts from around the world on a variety of companies and commodities. Plus, uh, we've got summaries of all the interviews that we do just to save you some time, because we know you're busy. Um, Here's what I'd be doing though. Go and join a thriving community of investors sharing their thoughts and ideas with each other in a nice, friendly, and safe environment, free from judgment, trolling, and abuse. And I hope you find that attractive because it is. Uh, go and join them at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. And we'd love your feedback too. So give us a like, it'd be appreciated. Any of your thoughts below, uh, we'll get back to absolutely everyone. If you want to see precisely what we talked to Dave about today, do take a look in the description below. Dave, how are you doing, sir? Doing fine, thank you. So where are you joining us from? I'm joining us from the uh, eastern suburbs of Vancouver, Surrey, Surrey, British Columbia. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I know it well. I have been there. Uh, fantastic. Well, thanks, thanks for joining us. How's life there? Are you okay? Surviving? Yeah, yeah we're, we're safe and we're okay. And um, I would have, you know, I would have thought you know, COVID's been a bit of a blessing, you know, for me in the, being in the mining sector. And I'm also in the you know, fishing tackle retail is going crazy. Everyone's got money to go fishing and it's fairly safe. So um you can't complain. I, 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 it's kind of terrible that um, some people do well out of this and some people don't, right? So. Fishing tackle retail. Does that mean you got shops or a shop? I have a few fishing stores in the greater Vancouver area. That was my love, my background, my educational background, I believe it was math and statistics. And I figured I'd be an actuary for 10 years and buy a fly shop. It just happened a little bit early. And um, in, 1990, in 1990, I bought the fly shop. And in 1991, I think Robert Redford, the movie A River Runs through it, which apparently is having a remake. And our motto was who who parked the bus in front of the shop? Because I never viewed myself as a businessman. But fly fishing went, went kind of crazy. But it's tough. You know, retail is a tough business and also um, a lifestyle retail where, you know, goodness, if you're a wealthy uh, person and your dear wife wants to open an equine business, prepare to lose a lot of money because it's a, it's a hobby. Don't. Let's, um, let's, so let's we, not I've go there. able to make a living doing it. Okay, well, let, let's not talk about horses. I, that, that, I, you're going to give me uh, trauma here. That's exactly what my wife and daughter are intent on doing. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> not buying a horse right now, actually. That's how bad things are. That's how bad it is, Dave. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> well, that sounds, that sounds rather pleasant. I do, we do, do like a bit of fly fishing myself. Um, Absolutely. So... We are here to talk about mining, though, so we better focus on that. Um, so if you don't mind, kick us off with a one minute summary of what it is that you got, and I'll pick it up with some questions from there. Yeah, we've got a fairly new listing on the TSX Venture called Stahini Exploration. Um, founded myself and a longtime fly fishing associate, Barry Hanslett, who's a, who's a driller who invented the A5 drill rig. And he's sort of private and quite successful. And with our with our different backgrounds, I've been a venture capitalist all my life and know the markets fairly well. And he knows mining very well, real mining, not not promotion, but real projects and real mining. We thought we should should do a you know, perform our own business. And we're concentrating here in Western you know, North America, particularly Yukon and BC, sort of Northern BC. And we have really ac good access to deal flow. And right now our focus is on our Ruby Creek project near British Columbia. It's host to the former Adnac molybdenum deposit, which once was a quite a large deposit moving into, into it was actually under construction when it went bankrupt in 2008. And we believe it's a, it's a really untapped project that's uh, got great potential. So that's our main focus and always looking for opportunities. We've done a lot of project investigation things as well, you know, trying to find new opportunities, but we're very fussy. Okay, so your, your partner's a driller. Uh, what's your background? My background, believe it or not, is, is I'm an investor. I've been an investor all my life, and, and I'm also a shareholder rights advocate. And um, I run a retail business. Um, yeah, and I, I, I love geology, but I'm not, I'm not a geologist. Right. But so, so if I'm, I need to know what I'm getting into. I want to know the guys that run a mining business understand mining. So you, you've given us some clues. You said we we have deal flow. We 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 you know you've got access to this stuff. So you know who, who's running the show? Who's making the decisions? I, I am the president and CEO, and I do make the decisions, but I, I, I surround myself with really, I've got a super intelligent VPX. I've got 
several you know, people in my staff they're very very talented and and um and my partner barry again he's extremely um he he's sophisticated and he's experienced and he knows what's good and what's bad and and you know we want road accessible projects where you know friendly jurisdictions where we can deal you know with the first nations people on, a, on an easy basis and um we're projects have a really good chance of becoming mines not just a real real long shot we're high probability um projects and uh, my partner years ago i said to him why do, why don't you take finders fees he was why do you think all the deals come on my desk he doesn't take finders fees on either side of things so he gets a lot of deal flow on his desk and visits lots of projects and his wife's a, a brilliant geologist janet miller her father's jack miller who's famous he brought sarah gordon he's a mining engineer so um, we have quite a, a background a pedigree and that's what they've been doing all their lives right so you've you've assembled you've assembled a team you're you're a business guy you're a Retail investor advocate. You, I try and protect retail investors from well, for some of the less scrupulous people out there. I, I get the enthusiasm bit, but I'm trying. I, I, but I also need to believe there's a there's a plan here. So, can you tell us what the business plan is? What what have you set out to do? It's a relatively new project. So, what, what are you trying to do? Well, the plan is create value for our shareholders. Pretty simple, you know, um, to align ourselves with our shareholders and make sure that we're we're, we're partners with them. We I participate in all financings and skin in the game, all those things. But but you know, we we believe we have uh, we're business people, and there's something that's sort, sorely lacking. So we want to concentrate on well, not not just in Western Canada. We've looked at stuff in Arizona. We looked at stuff in Peru. But just projects that we can get very that can really be creative to shareholder value and really create value. Like um, I don't want to pay much for a project, and I want to sell for lots. And we believe that if you can buy low and sell high and develop these things uh, with the right teams, uh, we're, I, I believe we're more early stage explorationists is what, what we do best at this point right now. We're certainly not mind builders. Uh, yet uniquely, we have in a very advanced project permitted and ready to go, which sort of you know changes the focus of you know as our company a little bit. Um, but that's what we want to do. We want to create value for shareholders, align ourselves with shareholders and, and you know scour for good projects. Right, so you, you, and you know, you know, you're a retail investor advocate. So you know those phrases are used a lot by lots of CEOs across. I hear it every day of the week. Some of them I believe, some of them I don't necessarily believe or I struggle to believe because these are just catchphrases. So what's your version of creating shareholder value aligned with share? What do you mean by all that? I'm buying a project for um, you know less than $100,000 and selling it for millions. That, that, that Have you ever value. done that? I've never done that yet, no. But I, I believe that, uh, for example, buying Ruby Creek for two and a half million dollars when we have a, you know, four hundred historic four hundred million pound resource that's measured in permit, I believe that's worth multiples and multiples of that. And it is for sale. Right? Everything's for sale for the right price, right? But obviously, we're not going to sell it unless it really makes sense and really adds a lot of value to our share price. And um, that's what we're looking for. So, how, how come you got to pick it up, and how come you get to pick it up so cheap? In your in your opinion, well, my the, my 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 partner, uh, co-founder Barry, he um, he lives in the Atlin area, and and when when um, there's once a company called Adnac, I lived in them. They had a market cap in excess of three hundred million dollars. They had an eight hundred million dollar credit facility lined up, and they drew eighty million onto it. Two thousand eight came along, and they sort of survived as a zombie company. Eventually, went to bankruptcy, and being up in Atlin, he got the reclamation work on the project, and they sort of had to clean up the old workings and make it clean again to get the bond you know, refund on the on the bond. And he really liked it. And his wife and him were very enamored, not just with the Molly project, with the intrusion itself, the big bath that came in there. We got all the plaster gold on our property. The biggest plaster camp in North America is on our property. The rougher silver mines. Um, there's a lot of, and it's just been all Molly, Molly, Molly the last 50 years. But what a unique project and what an opportunity. And we came out of the gates, Tahini was listed and it was up for sale. And and, um, and there were several other suitors and, um, my partner was very skeptical we'd be able to do it simply because of you know it's a non-arms length transaction and that was a, that was a bit of a lesson for me dealing with the exchange they don't like that it's very expensive and they they forced us to deliver a technical report have a, a disinterested boat justify the costs and do a financing all of which we complied and by the, i think we announced it july 30th 19 and by the end of 19 we received exchange approval at which point we uh we issued barry the first tranche which was 800,000 shares uh, a year ago, we issued his second tranche, which is 1.2. He's now a bigger shareholder than Mr. Sprott. He's the biggest shareholder of Barry. Uh, Mr. Sprott's number two, and I'm number three. And um, I think the three of us have like 37.5% of the company, and insiders have 42. Why is that Sprott a shareholder? Is that a legacy issue? 
because he um no it, it's interesting I, I be honest with you i'm not i i believe um i believe he was interested in the atlin gold camp I, I i can't speak for eric um and we're we, we're a bit unusual for him because he'd normally invest fairly big checks he's written some small you know we, we haven't we don't have the big market cap um i just basically want to you know our, our first financing i want to find a strategic investor I knew that all I can say is one of his companies was quite interested in the project before we got it. So I just basically let him know we had the project and we're looking for investors and uh, he took a punt, <laughs> put it that way. But he's backed us ever since. He's been kind enough to uh, write us checks when we need it. And, um, you know, we're, we're exploring hard. We're spending our money goes into the ground. I think that will keep him happy. And uh, we are <coughs> excuse me, currently we're exploring for precious metals, but and we have the Molly, and there's other other opportunities as well. So, how much money have you put in? Uh, well, I basically I know I, a little while ago I looked back and I I, I purchased the first three financings. I'd written $121,000 in checks, and I'd taken $36,000 in wages. You know, I like to participate in all the fun. How can I expect investors to invest in my company when I'm willing to write a check myself? And we don't have the cheap founders paper and, and no shares for dad. I don't believe in any of that stuff. And you want to buy stock, you have to buy it. You have to write a check or going to the market and, and that's the way it's got to be right so thirty six thousand bucks over what period uh, i get two thousand dollars a month is my monthly salary and i again i'm getting a lot of pressure to take a bigger wage I, i'm fortunate that i don't need it um but i, I just kind of think that you know when, when i do the big raise and raise 10 million dollars we have a 30 yeah we're gonna i'd like our salary to be you know the bottom 25 percent all of similar market cap companies right is where sort of the model i kind of like but again i think that the, the junior model is kind of broken. So many of these small companies, they raise a million dollars. You have three people that want six figure salaries. You have too much money going to marketing and too much money going to fancy dinners and hockey games, what have you. And there, there's no money left to put into the ground, right? Which is a, a big problem, right? Um, one of the things I'm most proud of, I, I, I talked to my CFO, Yana, and I have amazing staff. I, I said, how much we spend on Q2, Q3, which was May 1st, October 31st. And should we put 972,000 into the ground? I said, what did we pay management? It was 25000 and change. And I did the ratio at the time was 37.5 to 1. What that means for every $1 we, we paid management, we put thirty-seven fifty into the ground. And that, that's sort of unheard of. Right? You're likely to get 50%. But I think that's a statistic investors should look at when they invest is how much in a given year, how much money is going to the ground, how much, you know, going into G&A and, you know, management. And I think that's a good, a good metric to use. No, for, for sure. So it's very interesting what you said. I mean, 2000 is, is exceptionally low don't I, I suspect your shareholders aren't complaining but uh you know it's at the same time you need to pay, <laughs> pay yourself as a meaning meaningful respectful and, wage for the work and time that you you, you put in I, I, so I just let me be really clear here so that's your salary do you have any director's fees do you have any consultancy fees do you have any other kind of remuneration other than that two thousand bucks and whatever shares you buy at market no, no director's fees. I haven't paid my directors any money and no no consulting fees whatsoever. I've never taken a, a penny of consulting fees. Okay. Just want to be clear. Sometimes people are a bit cute with stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I have, you know, a, a couple of my directors have just what you said. You have to pay yourself. And I, and I, I recognize that. You know, we're in a bit of a unique opportunity. But again, I do I do well as a share. I do well. I have, I have 1.7 million shares. I have, you know, 250,000 options. And I only do well when the share price goes up. I mean, when I create value. So I just, again, I... I that's how it has to be, and that's what I, what I truly believe, and that's the model I'm trying to use. Yeah, and, and I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get the balance right here because it's an unusual conversation to have. I've obviously heard of CEOs who you know take a payment entirely in shares, and that that that's one thing. They obviously have made money at a previous occasion. They don't need the the income to pay. I don't know mortgage or food bills or whatever. But that's one play. But typically. You know, I would expect the comp the management to take some money because they've got to live and they've got to be remunerated fairly. But I, so, but I, but I appreciate what you're what you're saying and why you why you're doing it. Um, let's let's come back to the original question, which was what's the business plan or or strategy? I get that you you you've obviously picked up a a project here, but I guess the clue is. Uh, early stage explorer is what you are. You're picking stuff up cheap and you want to create some value. So talk about the assets that you have today and what you're going to be doing with those. Yes. Uh, well, for, first of all, our, with our flagstone our keynote project, which is Ruby Creek, um, it's a bit unusual because, again, we have this historic resource and it is historic. Uh, it, it's historic. There was a report done by Golden Associates in 2009 and it was 
um, 339 drill holes and 69,000 meters of drilling and 21,000 samples. And we haven't verified it, but it, it's historic, not because it wasn't 43101 compliant, it's just stale. Um, now, I didn't expect the price of Molly to have the move it's done in the last nine months. I mean, last August it was $7 a pound, and now it was recently 11 50 the last time I looked. I don't watch it every day, but it's had a pretty big move up. And of course, I, it's phone calls and fund managers. There's, there's, there's interest, and it's a pure Molly play, and it's one of the better ones out there. This is one thing I really want to emphasize is a climax type Molly deposit, the only climax deposit north of the 49th. It's real clean granite, it's at surface. Um, it was a real high grade core in 1969. Placer Developments had a had 110 million pounds at 0.14 percent, which is very very high grade. And um, but it, it, again, it was an asset I didn't think was really going to come into play for us. We're excited because we originally we wrote our technical report on gold, and of course we have all the there's, there's you know, the biggest at plaster camp in in Canada is in the Atlin area, and we have five plaster creeks under 10 years, three of which are active right now. And, um, but that's needle and haystack stuff, epithermal gold in the, in the creeks. But, you know, we believe it's intact. There's been three bedrock discoveries of, uh, of gold underneath the gravels and the plaster are still intact. Um, but we didn't, we were very surprised at how much silver we're finding. We're, we're really a silver story right now. If you we had put a news release out yesterday, we had a, a chip sample, a new discovery where we sampled 13,000 grams silver, or 14,000 grams silver, a new discovery called Silver Surprise. And we put a news release out some time ago. We had a seven and a half kilometer corridor called the Adira Corridor, which is, has high grade mineralization all along the corridor. These are all surface. So our teams are really excited about that. And these are, these are veins that are anywhere from 0.8 to probably three meters wide. And there's also the Ruffner Silver Mine was on our, well, we were right beside it and it produced back in the day. So um, that's sort of, we sort of segued into silver right now uh, because we're excited. We believe we have a really good early stage story. It doesn't mean the gold's not there. The Molly's there, of course. We, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting project, but it's big. And, and our, our challenge is to raise the money to properly develop it or, or bring in a partner because it's 27,000 hectares and it's monstrous. And, you know, to go from the Placer Creeks, it's a 25-minute drive up the hill to get to the Molly pit. And you can take a Honda Civic there. It's road accessible. So that, that's our, our, our main focus, and it really keeps us busy. Um, the other projects, I'm probably more of a royalty model than a project generative model. And again, let it, we're new and let us get out of the gate and do it. But we're looking at stuff right now. And, um, and again, a project that we can, we can get for very reasonable terms, almost literally next or stake them ourselves and then um, spin them out and create some value. Uh, again, it's about creating shareholder value. I want to build, I want to build an amazing mining company. Every business venture I've done has been successful and, um, and same with my partner. And that's what we want to do here. How many business ventures have you been successful in? Oh, my, 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 mainly my fly fishing store right. and then the wholesale business. And I've, I've consulted friends as well. And um, yeah, we, we have an iconic fly fishing business too. It's well known all, okay. all over the place. Let's, let's, stick with mine. But, let's stick with mining because I, I, I'm trying yeah. to get in my head a real clear picture of what the business model is. So it's early stage exploration. You've got one major asset. It's it's Molly versus silver, it seems. Silver is very topical. Silver price is good. Come off a bit recently, but general trend is good. Um, so how do you build out this business? Because you say it's ma you're sitting on a massive land board, 27,500 hectares here. You've got your 12 million market cap. You don't have a lot of cash. So how do you move this forward? I know you're going to protect, you're aligned with shareholders and you've got to protect shareholders and so forth, but a, a, a dilution is inevitable or a really clear business plan which says we will divvy up some of this land package, bring partners in, use their balance sheet. What is it? Is it some of all of the above or is it something different? Yeah, I, I think you, you take it as it comes. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're the fundraising part is to me, you know, being in business for a long time, sometimes the tide's going out, sometimes it's coming in and, and you, you, you have to jump on that opportunity. Like last summer, for example, the tide started coming in and it was easy to raise money. We took advantage of that when you, when you have to. Um, we're very lucky at this early stage too, because we have a lot of fairly high uh, income individuals who look for flow through in British Columbia and uh, yeah, as a flow, as a British Columbia resident, I get a, a discount. So that's always an alternative for us as well, but you're right. We have to dilute and we want to, you know, we have financial discipline is very important. We have less than 20 million shares outstanding and fully diluted around 21 and a half. I haven't issued any warrants, any financings. Um, but again, it's, it's a look for opportunities, which we're doing that we believe that we can add a lot of value to our, and, and again, we, these new opportunities we're looking at, we, we want to concentrate on Ruby Creek. We really believe in it. We think it's a, it's an amazing project. It's one of the best projects in all of BC. And we want to farm out these other opportunities. I know lots of other juniors that are looking for projects that have cash. I'm quite well connected within the 
you know, within the industry as well. I know lots and lots of players, and I'm, I'm, I've am i got a lot of respect amongst my peers as well. Right. So so let, let's talk about how you develop out. I, I get the size of the opportunity elsewhere, but let's look at Ruby Creek. So you've got these high-grade, high narrow veins uh, going on here, but you, you obviously want to find you know large volumes of contained metal in there um that that's what that's what moves the uh, the needle here for for investors and that's what's going to move the needle for you as a company so how are you going to go about doing that because your, your partner barry is he's a driller um actually make why don't you tell me about your vp of exploration maybe just for example you know what's he telling you how, how are you going to uh, develop out ruby creek yeah, Asan Salmabadi was recently appointed VPX. I don't, I've known Asan since he was a teenager in the, to the fly fishing. Uh, he's a passionate angler too. A very bright, very bright geologist working on his masters at UBC as well. We're quite connected with students. Um, we, we really were amazed when we brought him in and he des- deserves the appointment. Um, he, he works with me. I, I really like the way he's also business oriented and we discuss these strategies a lot. We speak to him regularly. I spoke to him yesterday for an hour. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we, it's challenging, right? We, we are excited about the silver. And, and again, these, this is a, all these big projects in Mexico that have these billion dollars, they're, they're chasing narrow silver veins. And so it's how generally how it works. Occasionally get a bulk ton of situation. We're excited about all the cross cutting structures. We might have some, and a lot, some of this silver is on the edge of the Molly pit as well. So um, again, I, I can only say what, you know, we're also looking into possibly bringing our Molly resource to current, right? If it makes sense financially, right? Because we're shopping that around a little bit and the silver does tie into that a little bit because they never fa- pro- properly factor the silver in. So many different angles of business development. And again, the outright sale of a portion of our tenures is not out of the question either, right? So any way I can extract, I will. It just has to make sense. Um, but we believe this year we can exhibit that these these veins are mineable at mineable widths and, and make sense. And that would add a lot of value because um, I believe just our market cap alone on, on our historic resource is, is, is attractive. And I also believe we're, you know, if you look at how widespread our silver mineralization is, it's um, one of the better early stage stories out there, you know, certainly. Um, um, no, I, 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 get, I, get, I get the really eye-catching, eye-watering in some ways, grades that you're talking about here. These are, these are, these are big grades. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I want you to tell me how you plan to extract that value, you know, because, um, you know, hunting after a narrow, narrow vein, high grade can work. I, it can also not work because, you know, reco- recovery rates and, um, you know, aren't always, you know, what, what one hopes and it's, it's, it's expensive. So what is the plan? What is your this uh, VPX telling you the best way to move forward is? How much money is he going to need? How much time is it going to take? When can we start to try and understand what it is that you've, you've got there over and above the high grade, you know, samples that you're, you're, you're putting out there at the moment? Yeah, our, our, my VPX is asking me to raise a little more money uh, to have a more, a more aggressive budget. And again, I, it's a balance. So I want to keep our share structure tight. I believe that when we drill and improve concept, we'll get a much higher valuation, at which point uh, I'll open the coffers up and I'll be willing to look at a much larger finance. And that's my job. My job is to raise money optimally and create the value, um, but not just raise money for the sake of raising money. We we have enough money to get by this year on, on a fairly modest program, maybe sink a couple drill holes at the end of the season, but I'd like to do a lot bigger program. And People have to understand the risk of drilling. You know, like we don't, just because you see shiny rock doesn't mean you have to get in there and drill right away. You know, you have to do your three Gs, your geology, your geophysics, your geochem. Like, for example, we just completed a skyborne, um, an airborne sky tem geophysical survey. That's the second one. It's a big, big project. So now we've done the whole project. Uh, pre, I shouldn't say the whole project. I would say that 80, the, the key areas. And so now there's a lot more data to work with. We're working on that. So um, we're going to, we're obviously this year where the focus is to, um, to, to concentrate on the, on the areas of silver and but also understand there's elevation changes so when the snow there's a lot of snow this year so we're going to start on the lower elevation which is gold focus and we have andrew steiner on our team he's a phd geologist at ubc and again we're focusing on gold and silver but we're doing on a, on a, on a shoestring budget that we believe we really stretch out to, to prove concept uh we're going to raise a bit more money you know between now and summer when the, when the time's right uh to ensure we have a bit of a buffer and we're just more to raising money on an as-needed basis, keeping our structure really, really tight. And that's my talk to them, the VP Act. And uh, we want to, we, we, we believe that once we prove concept that we can do it, do the big raise. And that, that's our goal. Well, talk, talk to me about that because, you know, being being tight with the structure and the in control and make sure shareholders aren't diluted on certain is really cool. But 
you also need to allocate the right sort of money to unlock the value in the right because timing is everything in mining, right? It's 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 it's, it's, yeah. it's critical here. What you don't want to do is be holding the reins too tight and not letting them kind of get on with the business of unlocking that value, right? So you've got to get that balance right. Um, I'm looking at a lot of names in the power, in the deck. In terms of the team here, we you know we've got seven names in terms of the advisory board. We've got another six names. Who's who's meaningfully active? There, I assume not everyone's getting paid, but it looks good on paper. But who's delivering value for you and helping you make well, well, decisions, or at least put options on the yeah. table for you to make decisions? Obviously, my my, my officers, um, Yana, Charles. Charles is a, a ex securities lawyer. He's our CFO, or probably he's a corporate secretary. Yana is our, our CFO. She's brilliant. Um, my, my background: I'm a businessman. Uh, Barry, uh, you know, in, in Nissan. And Janet, Barry's wife, she's, again, a geologist, and she's our project manager. Those are sort of the, the main people. Plus, we have um, three or four other geologists on staff as well. We speak to on a regular basis. And also Mark Lindsay, I haven't mentioned his name, but Mark's the fellow we offered the Q project from. And his father, that was a family project that they wouldn't give to any junior mining company at all. We're the first junior to ever get that project because he trusts Barry and he doesn't trust Howe Street. And, um, again, the, again, that's adding value. Um, but those, those are our, our key guys. And Mark's the one looking all around the world for other projects for us. Well, he's Sean Ryan's old partner. Um, and people have all heard of Sean Ryan. And they grew up in the Yukon together They, they you know, back in the day. And he's a, he's a prospector. Okay. So it sounds like you are trying to get data in to be able to make some decisions. Um, so when can we expect you to be clearer with your with the strategy, the, the, the way the way forward here? Like, like, you know, when do you think I'm now in a position to actually m- move at a different pace, move, move a little bit quicker, take advantage of the market conditions? Yeah, and that's exactly what I want to do. I want to uh, you know, time the markets. And I, obviously, I didn't expect Q1 to be the worst gold quarter in 40 years, right? I mean, we, no one saw that coming. I mean, we, I want to get into all the pontificate about why you want to own gold and silver. Uh, I guess that's a given. Um, you know, you have to time these things properly. And, and again, we might have to, um, you know, stick to our regular base of investors and, and raise another million dollars internally. We can do that. And we have the, you know, I'm talking to lots of fund managers. I'm talking to people in Europe. I'm, a, lot, a lot of people, whatever you're raising money, let us know. And, and uh, I'm going to be pulling them. Again, I, I, don't, I don't think it's worthwhile and, and with, at, at these present levels to do a major dilution to be a big round. But um, I have those internal discussions you're having with me all the time with our people that we really want to issue 5 million shares at, say, 60 cents and raise 3 million. We want to issue 2 million shares at 60 cents and raise 1.2 and have enough to do a, a modest drill program and move forward or do a big drill program. And let's face it, if you're going to drill 40 holes versus six holes, you have a much, much better chance of success. And we want to drill, and do a, you know, my, my goal is to do a big program next year, a big program, do a small program this year. And then I think we've, you know, and, and again, it's just a matter of deciding what targets to go for because we have gold targets. We have, of course, all the silver targets and um, potential Molly stuff as well. Right. And, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work out what, 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 who's driving. How is this being driven? You know, you're you're very conscious around the money, you know, and which is which is great and it's and it's admirable. Um, but. I'm, tr- I'm trying to work out what model you're trying to copy. Where, 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 what have you seen? You think, well, you know, that's the right way to do it because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hearing all the right things from you in terms of we've got to protect shareholders and so forth. But I'm, I'm, at the same time, I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of need to sort of see the vision soon to be able to say, ah, they're trying to be like X company. I can get, I understand that I can do some comps. I can look at some peers and say, well, this is how these sorts of things mm-hmm. play out. What's going on in your head with regards to that? Who, who do you think you, you're trying to be like? Yeah, I, I, I like to think that I, I personally believe much more in the uh, the sort of royalty model as opposed to a project generative model. This is just more philosophical. Like, for example, we get new projects. I would rather give them 100% to another player that we like and trust in, in return for shares and a royalty and, and, a, and, a, and a reasonable work commitment, but nothing they can't afford and give it all to them, keep the royalty and get shares in smaller companies and, and grow that way. And, and not looking for home runs, looking for singles and doubles, you know, especially some of these quite interesting. You get something very interesting on your desk. And like, again, we're looking at things right now as we speak and a little bit of news coming soon. And, but, but obviously Ruby Creek is our focus and Ruby Creek could be sold tomorrow. It could be sold three years from now. It could be never sold. Right. But um, it is up for sale. 
And um, again, it's just, it's just, there's, there's a lot of different avenues, ways of creating wealth. And in the meantime, we want to be disciplined. And, and uh, again, we last year on a shoestring budget, I had, well, I believe we did a major program. We had 16 different people on site. I housed them all and I fed them all. And, and uh, we, every single day we had crews with road accessible. We're using quads. Once in a while, we use the choppers to get people at the top of the ridge to keep their legs. I've got scalers working for me that you know, sort of long, lanky, long legged, lanky geologist. And, and again, we, well, we need to do that early exploration. And I have those people now. And, you know, Barry's a driller. We, our, our governance and, and, you know, ethics committee will make sure if he's ever going to bid on a drill, there'll be three other quotes in there. And he's not really interested in drilling our project because the exchange gets too fussy about all this stuff. We want to keep things transparent. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. But again, we, we're just, uh, we believe that we have uh, the tools and the acumen and, uh, you know, timing the markets is everything because let's face it, we have really good markets right now. Uh, I think our share price would be higher and I would be looking at doing a, a, a much larger round and, and issuing four or five million shares. Okay. Talk to me about the royalty thing. It's very topical at the moment. There's lots of royalty companies popping up all over the place. Um, are you saying it's because it's topical or are you saying it because you understand it and you think, well, that's 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 definitely the way forward. That's the future of the business once we get, you know, offload Ruby Creek, however you offload it. Um, no, our, 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 we're just you know, always to make sure we have a signature approach that we like, that we can work on, that's in our backyard that we were comfortable with. Uh, what that is down the road, we're not sure. And it might might just be Ruby Creek. It might be there's a lot more value in Ruby Creek keeping, keeping and exploring for gold and silver. Um, but the royalty model, for example, look what Great Bear just did. They they spun off a royalty and they might have might have sold that royalty for $5 million. Yeah, they're able to create $90 million in shareholder value by giving them a spinoff, right? What a great model. And, and I think that's brilliant. And you don't sell your royalties cheap. I've already had people discuss buying a 1% over. Why would I do that? Why would I sell a royalty early on and cheap right now when you, have, you don't need to? And they can be pretty valuable when you, you know, at the right time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I thought it was quite interesting the way that they, they did that. And I've seen lots of people try and emulate it. And we've seen lots of royalty companies you get it horribly wrong too. Um, but no, it's, it's an interesting well. space for sure at, at, at the moment. Um, okay. Well, like, and so Dave, what should we be thinking next? What are we looking forward to next? What are you going to be coming to the market and talking about? Well, we, we've got, we, we've still got some, uh, we're just finally compiling the last of our data from last year. We got a, an update on gold. Uh, again, we, we, at the end of the season, we sort of further down in elevation, we did some work on our, our gold, uh, on the Placer Creeks and then the gold, uh, you know, possibilities down, uh, the, the, the big, the big valleys, the faults themselves. Uh, we are working behind the scenes on, on the Molly stuff. We're, uh, we're talking to some engineering firms and I've been in touch with the, the former chairman and the former uh, president of Adnac Molly. My geologists have been in touch with their geologists. Um, we're, we're, we've, you know, we've done a lot of work on that in the, behind the scenes as well. Uh, also, um, we're working on IP geophysics right now. That's the next stage because, again, when you drill, you have to. We've done the regional geophysics, we've done our geology, and now we have to do some IP geophysics to trace these, you know, discuss with our geophysicists. Our geophysicist, Todd Ballantyne, he's ironically the geophysicist for Great Bear as well. And he's a really bright guy. And, you know, working with him on a regular, on a daily basis. So it's just fine tuning our programs this year and getting all our crews ready. All our, all our rooms are booked. All of our geologists are booked. Um, we're working with our cooks and just working on logistics for this season. And, uh, and my job, I don't want anyone else in the company worrying about the money. That's my job, right? And, um, you know, raising the funds. And, and my VPX wants to help me as well. We'll be doing a whole series of Zoom conferences soon. And I believe right now what we're really trying to concentrate is tell our story to the investment community because, you um, Quite frankly, we're, we're pretty frugal. We're going to spend any money on marketing, and I really don't want to spend any money on marketing. It's time to market. I believe now is the time to market because of our. We're very excited about our silver, um, and we're also quite excited that Molly's had a big move. And that's my job. I want to try and unleash some value. And if I can't get the share price any higher, and these have been tough markets. That's fine. We'll we'll find that at these levels. I mean, it's the markets are the markets, right? I get the money side of things. I, I, I totally get it. You seem really on it. But what makes you think? you're the right guy to be president and CEO of a mining company, given your background? Well, because I've been in the, investing in the mining business for 30 years and, and I've, I've lost a, a lot of money and I've made a lot of mistakes and I've, I've seen good companies and bad companies. And also I, I'm proud of the fact that uh, Barry and I are both businessmen. We're, we're successful. And again, Barry's, Barry's been in this business for 25 years. I, I speak to Barry almost daily, right? He, he's uh, he, he did it all on his own. And, and, he, and again, he's seen so much failure and so much success. He understands your road accessibility and getting drills in there and what really works. I mean, we, we got a drill program done at Q last year 
on a weekend. We got two holes done for and, and a road bill for thirty thousand dollars. Right? We're again, we're very nimble explorationists, and that's how it's got to be, right? We are connected. And he had a, a buddy that owed him a favor and wanted to get his crews ready for the season and came in and did it for us, right? And and that's the sort of ability we have. Again, I, I like to say we're very nimble explorationists. It's it's interesting. I, 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 that a bit interests me. Do you think that you, because you're not a miner, you have a different expectation and different approach to how things cost? Because when I when I speak to miners, I go, oh, it's broadly these sorts of costs, and they, you know, can be a little bit vague, uh, a little bit generic about what things cost. And I'm and you know, I'm very cognizant of and aware of the fun and games of how invoices are raised and the the room for error, should we say? Uh, let's put it that way, um, that, that one can occasionally see. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it. We've seen all the quotes. Like we got some geophysics quote recently, and, and Barry actually texts the guy privately, knows him. He didn't even know Barry's behind the scenes. And Okay, and suddenly the, the price changes. We're very much aware of costs and, you know, acutely aware of costs. Even right now, we're playing, today I'm signing for grants at UBC to bring in students and getting, you know, every every penny counts. Every single penny counts. And that's how you run a business. Um, what you do with your own money, donate it to charity, give it away to people. But business, every penny counts. And again, that's, that's my background. And, and again, I, I, you know, one of our geologists pointed up the side of a hill and made a recommendation. And I said to him, Barry, I said, $600,000. He goes, well, he's never run his own business, right? He's... Geologists are good at spending other people's money. It's interesting. We, we have crews in the field, and half of them are geologists, and they work for 600 to 1,000 a day. There's no markups. We don't uh, pay any, any, any consulting firm any markups. But I have prospectors that work for 250 to 350 a day. But some of these prospectors are brilliant, for example, Mark Lindsay. But on top of that, they're used to spending their own money and being real frugal. So they're always making suggestions and, you know, you know, well, let's all meet at the end of the road right here and save the money and the chopper doesn't need to pick it. Like, that's how they operate. Whereas a lot of these geologists, it's, it's called OP, other people's money, right? And again, that's a background, I think, just a general business background that I have, a common sense background in all aspects of things where, you know, where I think that we add, you know, a, a different flavor. And I, you know, I've got my other fellow board members like Fiori at Metallus, runs a real nice mining company, he's never rolled it back, he's a good guy. Uh, Gary Thompson was on my board, I won't even... Say why he only left because it would have been a it would have been a non arms lake transaction a metal transaction we tried keeping him and it was it wasn't going to work so unfortunately we had to have him resign and then we got the we, we still were able to sell metal um, and I surround I, I just surround yourself with the very very best people is the key like I the key to business I'll tell you right you're only as good as your people and I'm really really proud of, like of my fishing and my my mining company because I have amazing people we got a really good staff are really coherent. We're all very, we all get along really well. And there's been the odd bad apple and they're not with us anymore. You know, you have to keep a happy family and, and everyone's got to be on board and, and, um, and honesty and integrity and, and incompetence, right. And those sort of things. And again, uh, um, you know, give us some time. We're, we're fairly new out of the gate and I have no background at all. I agree with all that. And, and but just give us some time. We, I think we've, we've shown we're fairly prudent. We've acquired an interesting project and we're, we're working on new projects and, and, um, um, I look forward to seeing you in a year. I, I really do. Well, Dave, I hope it's sooner than that. I really do. Uh, like, yeah, absolutely. Appreciate your time today. Um, it's early days. You're straight out of the gate. Got all the right attitude. I uh, love it. Uh, so stay in touch. You, I'll be delighted to hear from you again yeah. soon. And I also do want to say, Matthew, I think your service is fantastic. Um, Years ago, I found out that, you know, I was wondering why this company I was invested had no analysts. And I realized, well, you don't get any analyst coverage unless you get the banking business. And I look at this so much of this being in Vancouver, especially, and being a shareholder's rights advocate and seeing so much, you know, people need unbiased interviews. And I love a, a family manager like you ask the hard questions, put people on the spot. It's very badly needed. And remember, I'm an investor and, and I've been all my life and I have way too many positions. And my, my specialty has always been precious metals. And to me, and I tell people this again and again, like like the number one criteria, when you buy a junior mining company, you have to dilute to raise more money. And that's a, not a good model. I don't have cash flow coming in. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's generally a model that fails most of the time. And it's management. You're like, you're, like someone said, what's your top five attributes? That says management, 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 uh, Ruby Creek and Q. You know, uh, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's everything. It really comes down to management, how they do things. And um, again, there's a lot of too many games played in this whole business and, and it's a shame. And, and there's so many people, I mean, a lot of good properties never even get looked at because they're just used for promotional purposes. And this is what this vendor, we, when we bought our Q project, he's tried before and realizes they don't, they're not interested in my project. They're interested in a promotion they're using my project for a promotional vehicle, uh, but no money goes into the ground, right? Or very little, just nominal money, just a, 
just to keep the property right so um we were trying to do things the right way and a bit differently and but again i really i really appreciate your service too i think it's very much needed and i think you'll do very well down the road and i think that any any ceo who's um you know on the right track to be willing to talk to someone like you and be put in the hot seat so to speak yeah and no, i appreciate i appreciate that that's that's very kind of you to say we do try um we do try so well look thanks for your time stay in touch we'll speak thanks. to you soon okay okay will do okay safe travels bye-bye